Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a couple of rapid reviews, I guess, to do for you. I got two knives, two crossbar lock knives, so I thought I'd put them together and talk about them with you. So the first one I already did a video on, and you guys have probably seen it. This is the Kershaw Iridium. So I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but I freaking love it. Kershaw killed it on this. Um, this literally redeemed the iridium in my eyes i really did not like the one that i reviewed last year in d2 and aluminum this version is 14c28n stone washed with aluminum topo handles but that uh, aluminum is milled the topo pattern is milled these little rivers are milled in and it is absolutely fantastic both visually and ergonomically you can choke up here, super comfortable knife. The spring in here, or the action, is really good. The studs are great. I mean, it just fires. I can reverse flick it, no problem. Um, you have a lefty clip option, which is always good. And you have a great crossbar lock. You can drop it like it's hot. There is no side to side, no up and down, and it just drops down. It is dead nut centered. And it's actually a super useful blade shape. I mean, it's a drop point, spear point style design and uh, super usable, plenty of poke there. And uh, ergonomically, you can choke up. You just have a lot of options with this blade shape. I really like it. It's a good size knife as well. I mean, you're talking about, I didn't even measure this, probably three and then 3.3. Let me grab this. I know this is 3.3. This is the Stout V2. Yeah, just about. Maybe 3.4. Could be considered 3.5. I don't know. I'm not positive. But somewhere around 3.4, 3.5 inches on the blade length. So basically perfect for most people's EDC. Pretty lightweight. Um, and yeah, just an excellent knife in my opinion. Matching backspacer in Gmascus little lanyard slot there and uh yeah i mean i love it i don't know what else to say i think this is only available on kershaw's website it's an in-house design um so you can pick it up from kershaw 75 bucks i think that's a decent price no issues there and uh there are other versions i'll link those i think they're at blade hq and other places so i'll, I'll link what i can down below of course, you can always check the description of my videos. I have tons of links down there uh, with discount codes, and some are just affiliate links, but uh, they all help the channel, and they can help you, of course, but totally your choice if you want to use them. That is the Iridium. The next one is very different, but also a crossbar lock. So this one was sent to me by Real Steel Knives. So interesting story i saw uh metal complex's video on this knife called the evolution and that had like a button lock it was a titanium button lock frame lock on washers it was wild looking and so i hit up real steel via dm on instagram to this day nobody has replied to that dm but then they emailed me a couple days later totally out of the blue separately like didn't say like, hey, saw your, you know, DM or whatever. Um, I think they're hitting up a bunch of people because I've talked to other people they've they've reached out to. And they asked if I wanted to check this knife out and join their affiliate program. And I have no qualms joining their affiliate program because I've handled a handful of real steels over the years. And they've all been really good quality knives, right? They're more user-based than they are fidget-based, I think, for me. But they're good knives, and so I did sign up. There is a link down below for Real Steel Knives. Now, you can use the code LEFTYEDC and save 15% off on their website. So that's a pretty good deal right there. Now, I don't know if they price their stuff up so that that 15% brings it down to dealer price, but either way, you get 15% discount with the code LEFTYEDC, so definitely check that out. Now... They 
said, you want to check out the Pathfinder? And I went on their website, I looked at a couple of things, and I said, well, you know, yeah, sure, but I'd love to check out the Evolution. That's why I reached out to you. And, you know, I said this other night, I think it was called the Solace or something like that. And their response was, well, let us send you this, see how it goes, and then uh, we can go from there. And I was like, all right, sounds good. So they sent this one along. This is the Pathfinder. This is in G10 and 14C28N. Now, first things first, this knife is not for me. So it's just not going to be a knife that I gravitate towards. It has studs that are really tight to the frame. The studs are pretty sharp, actually. And it's on washers. Now, crossbar locks on washers can be good, but they take a long time to break in, longer than I really have to review the knife. Um, you know, you can loosen the pivot. When it arrived to me, it was set up where you pull the bar down and it would pretty much fall and close. But... In order to do that, that pivot had to be loose. So there was play. There's already minor play right now the way I have it. I tighten it a little bit. And I can kind of swing it down. Right? I can kind of do this move. Uh, but in order to have it kind of free fall, you would need to loosen it to where there's blade play, which is not ideal, obviously. And I don't really think this is a fidgety knife. I think this is meant to be a user knife. Now, I did mistakenly say that they listed this as a bushcraft knife when I talked about it on my live stream the other night. That was actually a different version with a Scandi grind. And that one they call the folding bushcraft knife. This one has just a traditional V grind. And they do not claim it to be a bushcraft knife. So I do want to put that out there. Um, it is a pretty large knife. Here's the uh, Iridium. So substantially larger than the Iridium. I'd say 3.75 inches of blade on this one. And it's also quite heavy. You have full steel liners in there. Um, and it's just got some weight to it. It's got a full backspacer as well. It does have a reversible clip. One really cool thing about it is the uh, opposite side actually has a filler tab in the back here, which I've never seen anybody go to that length before. Usually you'll just have a hole here. But I thought that was a pretty neat touch. Is it necessary? Not really. I had to kind of slide it in there and then screw these down. And you basically have to like pull the scales off so you, you loosen the screws, and then you can kind of peel the scale back a little bit and pull the clip out. You can't just pop it out, but you don't have to take the knife part. You just have to take the, the screws out, but it's kind of interesting how that all goes down. The crossbar lock feels pretty good. It sticks out of the handle just enough that you can get a decent grip on it. Now, if you have the clip on the wrong side, this knife is very hard to operate. I'll just demonstrate right-handed. Flicking it is okay because I can get enough of a grip like this. But closing it is very hard to do because you need leverage in your palm. I do, at least, to grab the bar and slide it down. And this is the same problem I have with the Manix, too. And everybody loves that knife, and I just don't. I think, you know, for people with large or smaller hands, I have a large glove size hand, it can be a little difficult in the non-dominant hand or non-clip side hand to close the knife because you have to be able to pull this down. And you can't do that without the leverage down here. It slides out. But once you have it on the clip side, you can just grip the clip, grab the bar, and throw it. So is it a, a, a bad thing? I mean, not really, because most likely you're going to be using your clip side hand, right? Um, but yeah, you can see how it's not super fidgety and these studs are pretty sharp, man. They're, they're kind of uncomfortable, honestly, to flick. Uh, for me, it's nicer to just slow roll them. Um, you do have a decent stock thickness, but also not like overly thick, but it's going to be, you know, sturdy and you have a decent grind. It is sharp as shit. And I think this is just going to be an excellent user knife. Very comfortable in the hand because you got some girth, some thickness there. The G10 is very comfortable. So, not for me. The Iridium is more my style, right? 
We got bearings in there. We're swinging shut. We got great studs that pop. You know, just a little bit smaller knife, a little bit more of a choke up grip for EDC stuff. Where this is more of a hard user style knife that maybe somebody working in a warehouse or something like that would want to use. So not up my alley, but definitely well built, well made, all that good stuff. It's, it's all there. It's just uh, whether it is your style or not. So that's the Pathfinder from Real Steel. And again, you can use the code LEFTYEDC on the Real Steel website, and that'll save you 15% off whatever you want to pick up. And I will link Kershaw down below. I don't have an affiliate link, but um, they were kind enough to send this to me. Both of these were sent to me by the companies. So always consider that when you um, are listening to a review or whatever. Uh, but there you go. Those are my thoughts on these two knives. And uh, I'd love to hear which one you would prefer. Let's say you could take either one. Which one would you take? The more fidgety EDC knife could definitely still put in work. But, or the more heavy duty sort of tough work knife. Which one's your choice? Washers, bearings, right? Uh, I love you guys. Definitely uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Hit the like button, check off that notification bell, do all the cool shit, and uh, I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.